Today I have moved a little bit further north from Atlanta. As you can see by the mural there behind me, I'm in Athens, Georgia now, home of the Georgia Bulldogs and rival to my Alabama Crimson Tide. I'm gonna be spending just a little bit of time here in Athens because it's a college town. As you can imagine, there are quite a few crazy stories from here in this area that I can tell. I'm starting this Athens series off with an unsolved case that is no longer getting any attention from the Clark County Athens Police Department. It's just that in this case, it's several years old now and they have exhausted all of their leads. They have investigated all of their theories that people have come up with over the years. And on top of all of this, they have a bunch of new cases coming in day in and day out that they have to attend to. So hopefully with us putting the story out today and with everyone's help, maybe we can draw up some new leads for them to investigate and hopefully uh, get the case moving somewhere again. Either way though, on January the 19th of 2001, the Athens Clark County Fire Department was called to a local house fire once that fire department put the fire out and they gained entry into the home. They located the human remains of a woman, which appeared to be in strange circumstances. Today, I'm gonna to be going to the location where this happened and I'm gonna tell the story of the death of Terry Louise Baker from here in Athens, Georgia. Athens has a nice downtown area. Athens, Georgia actually has some rich history when it comes to the music industry. Some very notable bands have come from Athens. R.E.M., the B-52s, Widespread Panic, and the, there's a few more. They all have come from here in Athens, as well as it being a college town. Wook Street Records, another record studio. Looks like they closed off this entire block just for shopping and eateries and stuff. That's cool. Here's this placard here. First flight in Georgia. Georgia's pioneer aviator, Benjamin Thomas Epps. He was born here. Looks like he opened the first automotive repair garage right here out of this building and uh, he would wind up building his first airplane, a monoplane with an upright buggy seat, bicycle wheels, and a 35-foot wingspan. He built it right out of his garage, out of this building. And it looks like across the street there is a statue. It looks like there's a statue of him right there. Yeah, that's definitely a statue of him building his first plane. Epps garage monoplane there on the plans in his hand there that's cool interesting to know that that just happened right there across the street Tara Louise Baker was born in 1977 in East Point Georgia she was one of four siblings and in 1995 she graduated from Love Joy High School she immediately enrolled to uh, Georgia College in Milledgeville, Georgia. In 1998, she graduated with two separate bachelor's degrees. Tara, she was super, super smart, and she was destined for great things. After the new millennium and the Y2K virus scare, Tara decided to use her smarts, and she enrolled right here at the University of Georgia. In their law school program, she wanted to be a lawyer. Tara was about a month into her second semester here at Georgia when late one afternoon, Tara and a friend of hers, who was also in law school, they spent the afternoon and the evening in the UGA Law Library studying and getting ready for a test in one of her classes. They were right here inside of this building right in front of us. This is the Law School Library. Tara wanted to do good on that test because that next day when she was going to take it, it was also her 24th birthday. So she was excited to, to both do good on the exam and celebrate her birthday afterwards. That night, Tara's friend left this library at about 7.30 p.m., expecting that Tara was going to leave shortly thereafter. 
But at 9.46 p.m., that friend received a call from Tara, who was still here at this library studying. Tara had just called her to ask if she had made it home safely, and during that conversation, the friend made reference to Tara still being here studying all by herself, and Tara told her that she was going to leave here and head home at about 10 p.m., which was about 15 minutes from the time they were talking on the phone. When they hung up that phone call, little did this friend know that this was going to be the very last time anyone would talk to Tara Louise Baker ever again. The next morning at 11.23 a.m., 911 dispatch received a call about a home that was on fire. This home right here. The athens Clark County Fire Department arrived here on the scene to heavy smoke and flames billowing up from the rear corner of the home. Firefighters could not get into the front door. Not only was it locked, but it was also deadbolted. So they kicked in the front door and they entered the home while they went through the home trying to locate the source of the fire. The firefighters noticed that all four burners on the kitchen stove were turned to the on position and high as they continued to make their way through the home. They also found that a bedroom door and an adjacent bathroom were both locked. After kicking in both of those doors, they finally found the source of the flames inside of a back bedroom over in the back corner as they started moving items around and extinguishing that fire. Just before they had it almost all the way out, they located human remains laying on the floor in that bedroom. As quickly as they could get the fire out, the chief at the fire department that had responded to the call immediately called in law enforcement and an investigation got underway. They had learned from neighbors that the person living in the home was Tara Baker. And on top of that, her 1996 Dodge Neon was parked directly out in front of the home. Law enforcement was also able to connect that car to her through its registration. It took only a short amount of time for test results to come back from the crime lab. And they positively identified the remains as those of Tara Louise Baker. While this was going on, fire investigators went through the home with a fine tooth comb and they ultimately ruled that the fire had been intentionally set. An autopsy was performed on Tara's remains where they discovered that prior to the fire even being started, Tara had been beaten very, very badly. She had been stabbed multiple times, she was strangled, and she had been sexually assaulted. Once these results came back from the medical examiner, it was clear that whatever happened to Tara Baker between 10 p.m. and 11.20 a.m. that next morning, it had been bad. She, as I said, had been beaten, stabbed, sexually assaulted, and to finish her off, they strangled her to death. The killer obviously didn't want to get caught, so they tried to set a fire, hoping that it would burn down the entire home and it could hide their crime. But unfortunately for them, a good Samaritan happened to be driving by. They saw the smoke and they called 911 just in enough time for firefighters to get there and put it out and find her remains. Law enforcement has not released any other information on Tara's case. We don't know if they found any evidence in the home linking someone to the crime. It's not believed that this was a robbery. Uh, typically a robber would not want to hang around and spend that much time with the victim. This crime seemed to be more personal than that. They thought it was someone who knew Tara that may have either been stalking her or at some point could have even dated her. Or possibly it was someone that wanted to date her and that she had rejected at some point. One way or another, it seems like the person knew Tara, even if she didn't know them. I do know that early on in the investigation, a former boyfriend of Tara's was given a polygraph test and he passed it. He was cleared as a suspect very early on. Just like I have been doing with all of my recent stories, I have reached out to the Athens Police Department and I spoke to the lead detective over this case, but obviously this is still an open investigation and he couldn't share any information or crime scene details or anything like that with me for fear that it could possibly hurt their case if they ever did find someone responsible for this horrible, horrible attack on the sweet and innocent lawyer to be. Everything that I have just shared with you is all of the information that's available in the death of Tara Baker. Pretty much since they found her and the investigation began, no new information has come to light. 
and this case has basically been cold now for over two decades meaning some psycho killer has been on the loose for a long time unless they committed a crime somewhere else and got locked up for it but uh, I don't know that any DNA evidence was uh, retrieved from this Tara Baker case to match it up to anyone who's currently in prison or someone who has been in prison because of that I'm making a plea to anyone out there watching this video right now if you or anyone you know has any information about the attack and the murder of Tara Louise Baker here in Athens please reach out to the Athens Clark County Police Department I know the reward was at like twenty six thousand dollars or something like that and I don't know exactly what it is now but a reward could be yours if you have any information leading to an arrest that is going to do it for this story today from here in Athens Georgia and the death of Tara Louise Baker I want to thank you all so much for watching I really appreciate it if you're new here go down and hit that subscribe button then hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a video if you're one of those that's asking how to support the channel there's links in the description box below but you guys just watching my videos and hitting the thumbs up that's all I need Thank you all. I will be back again with another one from here in Athens, Georgia. Until then, please all of you stay safe and stay healthy. Much love to you all.